Yo, 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 what's good, everybody? You're now tuned into Ill Vibe Theory, your number one source for underground hip hop in the Las Vegas Valley. What's good? What's up, everyone? This is Kaylin Hyper tuned in to Ill Vibe Theory. We're having Forte Bowie call in. So, straight from ATL, we got him on the line all the way in Vegas at coming from UNLV. What's up? Let's yeah, bring him on air. Let's bring him on air? Yeah, let's, we'll do that. Yo, Forte, what's good, man? What's going on, man? How y'all? Can y'all hear me? Yeah, we can hear you good. How's it going? Oh, man, everything's good, man. Everything's good. I'm glad to glad to be here. I'm glad y'all having me, man, for real. No, the for honor real. is ours. The yeah. pleasure yeah, is we, ours. Yeah, we really appreciate real. it, man, just taking the time out. I know you're a busy dude, man, for sure. Hey, man, it's all good. I just got back from Miami, so I'm at the crib kind of sick because that change of weather is real crazy. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. Is, isn't it like 80 degrees out there with humidity and everything? It's it's crazy. It was like eighty degrees. We were on the beach, and it was just <laughs> that sun. sounds nothing but wonderful. Sun and humidity. Man. Isn't yeah? It sounds wonderful to you. Get back home, and it's nothing but like rain and that's like, true. Cold. Yo, it, 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 here yeah. in Vegas is the same thing right now, man. We're like in forty degree weather and stuff. Yeah, it's know, crazy. Man. Wow. Yeah. And that's like that's insane for Vegas. What yeah. was going on out there? Were you at Art Basel by any chance? Definitely was at Art Basel. I had a show out there um, with a bunch of Atlanta, you know, a fellow Atlanta um, artists and friends of mine, and we just went out there, had a show, and then, you know, for the rest of the time, we just enjoyed uh, Miami and Art Basel, you know, so <laughs> nice. and then we was chilling. Definitely, man, definitely, for sure. And, um, you know, with that being said, um, you Tell us, tell us three words to describe you and your music as an artist, man. Man, three words to describe me is a very good question. Um, I would say, um, hello. Oh, my bad. Can you repeat that again? My bad. You broke up for like a couple <laughs> seconds. I'm so sorry. Okay, it's, it's I all would good. Say, I would say, um, passionate spontaneous and um uh i don't know uh, that last one is killing me you got a know. good list i don't know you got it you got it you got I a guess, good list going <laughs> yeah I, I i gotta finish it off strong you know what i'm saying um, <laughs> no, i, feel I would you. <laughs> say uh maybe um passionate uh spontaneous and i, I would say um just great. I, I think great is a simple word up. that pretty much speaks volumes. Yeah, definitely, nice. man. And, and I, I, we definitely could hear that in, in your music, man. You, you really have some really diverse and versatile music that you're putting out, really. Thank you, man. Thank you so much, man. Definitely. And you've noted that you wanted to focus on your own label. Can you tell us about 1990 and what it means to you? So a little bit about the background of that whole thing. Um, 1990, that's the year I was born, I'm 23 years old, and, um, you know, I just kind of feel like the 90s were just a great time, I grew up in the 90s, that's pretty much all I know, you know, I do my research and stuff, and I know about the 80s and the 70s, but I feel like in all realms of everything, the 90s had, like, the best movies, the best TV mm -hmm. shows, like, the, the best commercials, like, it was just the best everything in the 90s, you feel me, so it's kind of like... And I don't want people to think that it's like a nostalgic label to where it's like everything is just 90s, but I just want to take it back to a time to where everything was, you know, just great, you know what I mean? And it wasn't a lot of just extra stuff. It's just, you know, good music and, you know, yeah. <laughs> I, I couldn't agree with you more. And it's crazy you brought that up. I was just talking to my mom today. I was like, you know what? I wish I was a little older in the 90s because I was born in 94. So I was like, I yeah. wish I could have experienced it more. We were just talking about how great it was today. So the fact that you want to go back to how that music made you feel, how the culture, TV, like everything, that's like really creative because exactly. I love that, you know? Exactly. And I said, I just want to bring that that feeling, not necessarily the actual sound, but yeah. just the feeling that you got when you heard certain things and certain things, you know. Like, I go on YouTube and just watch old commercials from the 90s because <laughs> it just brings me back to how I felt as a child, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, <laughs> what are some, you know, like, that's, commercials that's that... That's where I'm at. 
What are some commercials that Man. come to mind? <laughs> the honeycomb commercial, a honeycomb commercial that used to just turn me all the way up. <laughs> that, and then a commercial it turned like, you up. It was another commercial about contact lenses. It was just like, like just <laughs> watching them. It was just like, it was just great. And it was funny. Like, things are just different. Even just, just like I was at my friend's house and he has a bunch of old hip hop magazines like Double XL and yeah. Source magazines and Vibe magazines and this would be so much thicker back in the day. Like those magazines would be so thick, it was almost like an encyclopedia. But nowadays you pick up a, X, a Double XL or a Vibe or a Source or whatever, and it's like so thin. Like it's, it's true. Like <laughs> nothing. It's like almost like those little. Uh, you know, when you used to go to school and you used to have the book fair coming in and they would yeah. give you a little like, school last <laughs> thing. They were like back. four pages to show you what books they had. That's yeah. how small those like magazines are nowadays. And I just feel like, you know, it's just nothing to talk about, I guess. I think that's kind of why those magazines are so small. And like, I don't know. I kind of got off subject. but No, that's, Yo, that's on topic. I, that's interesting. Yeah. And I just wanted, I know it, it's so funny that it's so random to me, bro. How? What was in the 90s contacts commercial, bro? <laughs> it, man, I don't know. It was just, bro, it was so weird. That's what I mean. It was just so weird, but it made sense for the time. And I feel like if they would have played it now, some people would probably wouldn't get it. But it was just like, it was just weird chick who had glasses, and she was just <laughs> complaining to her mom about how she needed um, contact lenses. And she was like, yeah, was like, I need contact lenses. It was oh, just the weirdest thing ever, but like, bro, it just, bro, when I saw it, it made my soul so happy, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> That's I feel all that like counts. A lot, of commercials, a lot of commercials nowadays are funny, mm-hmm. but it's like, you know, dry comedy, and it's like funny, and it's cool, but... Even the commercials back then used to, like, fill you up, like, food. Like, I used to watch, like, a commercial for, like, Nerf or, like, some kind of super soaker. I was like, oh, I'm yeah. done. I don't need to watch the rest of the show. I have to go get that. You know what I'm saying? I just <laughs> yeah. want to bring that, you know, just that feeling to people, man. No, that's so true. And one thing that comes to mind when you talk about, like, 90s commercial, do you ever remember, I think it was, like, a McDonald's commercial, and there was, it was, like, ah, what was it? It was a little girl and a little boy. I don't know if you can remember. And they were, like, one for me, one for you, one for me. Do you remember (laughs) that one? That one, yeah, you know what that is, right? Like, that commercial was the cutest thing ever, and, like, they can't, I don't know, it just made you feel good. Even when they had the little girl in the Pepsi commercials and stuff. Yeah. Taco Kirk. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then the, the little dog with the Taco Bell commercials, the little Chihuahua. Yes, with the yes. Taco Bell commercials. He was hurt. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> that's just how you made you feel some type of way. Yeah. Man, I need to go back. You got me feeling like I need to watch YouTube man. tonight. Man, man, I, <laughs> I know we... YouTube and just, just type in any of that. And what the best way to do it is if... You go and watch like an old episode of All That or like yeah. Hey Arnold or something, Man. and like somebody didn't take out the commercials. Those are the best. Oh, those man. are the best. Bro. <laughs> when you watching the show and they got the like actual commercials, from uh-huh. like, bro, come on, you cannot beat that. Like that's just, like the greatest <laughs> ever, bro. I love this. I love this talk. <laughs> Yo, man, that's, that's real, you, man. though. That's that's so real. That's like, real. and you know, with with the '90s, and, and I I know like you definitely have such a huge like. Uh, I don't know, a lot of inspiration from a lot of, like, a lot of people from R- in R&B. And, and, you know, you certainly have a, a huge appreciation for all genres of music, as you stated, in, like, past interviews. And, and it's definitely clear, like, through, like, the recent tracks you dropped. I know you did that um, Wu-Tang Forever, Drew Hill Forever cover. And then you also did yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, you dropped that. You dropped that. Uh, more recently, you had that I Can't, uh, I Can't Make You Love Me joint. Um, yeah, yeah, tell yeah. tell us a little bit about, you know, what's been inspiring you to put these records out you know, you, you know, owes to a lot of these old records as well. And, and just tell us a little bit about that, man. Man, I just feel like right now I'm in an in-between space. Like, you know, I dropped the, the Project Vice House Deluxe in, in August, which is still available and we're still pushing that. But, you know, it's like, you know, I, I want people to feed off that. But I'm just, you know, I'm always creating, you know, and sometimes certain things I create are just too good to keep, you know, to myself and, Sometimes I'll never know when I'll put it out, so sometimes there's no better time than the present. You feel me? Um, mm-hmm. I did the whole drill for everything, and I was like, it only makes sense to drop this now. Wu-Tang Forever is hot. The album is hot, so I might as well just drop this now and just see what people think, and people loved it. And I Can't Make You Love Me is one of my favorite songs ever. I think mm-hmm. that's like my second favorite song ever. And 
I just redid it, made a crazy beat around it, like just something real simple, and put it out, and people gravitated towards that as well. So, you know, it's just me, you know, doing what I do, creating and just giving people, you know, what I can. Mm, that's and, really cool. And and that's really like I I, I know it, it's so dope to me that you you actually like produced you produce as well. And um, mm-hmm. it's it's funny because like literally before this interview, I'm over here bumping the original "I Can't Make You Love Me" joint, and then like com- in comparison wow. with with your joint, like it's it's re- you're really talented, man, for real. And Thank and you, on the production tip, you. man, like just can you tell us about your creative process with the production and everything? Man, it's, it just happens. You know what I'm saying? Like I've I've been using FL Studio since the tenth grade. Yeah. Wow. You know, I think I think I don't know how many years ago that is, but. That's a minute ago, but, you know, that's all I use. And I just get on there and just kind of, you know, I never really know what I'm going to do when I go into it. I just kind of, you know, just mess with it. And I just find what works. You know what I mean? It's always a it's always a, a, a different experience making tracks. Like, I just start adding on and adding on. And some beats are just a lot and some beats are just so simple. But, you know, I just, I just try to create what's... Now, you feel what I'm saying? Whether it be a sample or whether it be just something completely original, man. It's just, it's just a pastime of mine. It's a, it's a hobby. I love to do it. Like, that's just like my joy. That's my pleasure. That's great. For sure. And and you, um, did you, you did Gucci Mane, right? <laughs> yeah, most definitely. Yeah. And with that record, so I'm a really big follower with Two Dope Boys, and um, they dr- when they debuted one of your tracks, um, I'm sorry, I'm I can't pronounce it, the uh, a Tickophobia joint. Um, yeah, that's you said it right. Okay, right. for sure. <laughs> uh, so Turned it, up. I see you, boy. They noted actually that Gucci Mane it, it hadn't come out at the time. They noted that the track was going to feature Isaiah Rashad. What is that true? Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. Um, basically, um, me and Isaiah Rashad, you know, working on some stuff. So, you know, um, back then we were working on something. We're still, you know, about to work in putting some stuff, but. I, hope, I thought what we were going to be working on was going to be uh, included on that project, the project I just dropped, but it wasn't. So, I mean, we got some stuff, you know, cooking or whatever. So, yeah, you should be looking out for that. Yo, so, can't wait for that, Isaiah Rashad. And who who else um do you plan on working with, if anything, for the for whatever it is you're putting out, or or who else would you like to work with in the future, man? Man, as of right now, you know, I'm working with a lot of the people in the city of Atlanta that are really doing their thing and, and buzzing. Of course, you know, I don't know if you guys know about 2-9. Yep. Yeah. Um, I was just about to ask about it. Yeah. Those are like the homies. We were just down in Miami fooling. So, yeah, Curtis, whose video was just on uh, MTV Jam. Shout out to Curtis. Um, you know, Damn. Retro Sushi, Fat Kids Brother, all of them. You know, we definitely going to work and put some stuff out for y'all. Denzel Curry out of Miami. I've been working with him. We're about to do some stuff. It's going to be crazy. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, we're working with people here and there. I think Danny Brown is going to get on the Gucci Mane remix, but you didn't hear that from me. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I've been in the studio with Charles Gambino. Um, wow. You know, like all that. Yeah. yeah. Well, you like gotta talk that. a little more about that. Yeah, you can't please, just tell keep us going. A little more, bro, because <laughs> his album come out tomorrow. And yeah. what's up, man? The album is great, by the way. <laughs> it the album is. is great, by the way. But um, yeah, man, we were um at Stankonia Studios in Atlanta, and he, you know, he wanted to meet with me because I heard he heard some records and he really liked it. And we just sat there. He played me some stuff that you know, I think it's on an album. I'm not sure. He just played me some stuff, and then I played him some stuff, and we just went back and forth and talked about you know stuff. And yeah, man. So you know. That's all I'm going to say about that. But, you know, <laughs> in the works. That, I mean, yeah, it's in the works. But people that I want to work with, I want to work with Sizzle. I feel like she's beautiful. <laughs> Besides the fact that she makes great music, I want to, like, slick marry her. But, um, you know, definitely want to work with Sizzle. Definitely want to work with, uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Tinashe. Um, yep. Yeah. Her name Tinashe. She's dope. I want to work with her. I really want to work with Rihanna one day. I think <laughs> that would be dope. That would be cool. I really cool. want to work with Rihanna. Um, really want to work with Justin Bieber. Um, yeah. and Britney Spears. I really want to do something for Britney Spears. <laughs> I've been a Britney fan. No, I'm serious, bro. I've been a Britney yeah, that's fan cool. for like ever. I was like an NSYNC fan, a Backstreet fan. Man. I was we were in... just talking about that Yo, today, we were, too. We were, we were really just talking about that before yeah. we got on here. That's See, so we, funny. We turned, we turned spirits. Yeah, <laughs> we are, man. that's crazy. 
Yeah, we were just clowning Christian. Yeah. We're like, what you know about Drew Hill? You probably grew man, up on Britney. Man, no, <laughs> man, that's <not>. So that's funny. <laughs> but um, the thing is, I grew up on all that. Like everything yeah. was like together. Like you know what I'm saying? Like I was, you know, I would get teased in school for listening to like Christina and all that stuff. They were like, bro, what but you doing? But they were bro? good. <laughs> Yeah, like, it was all good. Like, Hanson, like, people, like, sleep on Hanson. They like to, like, joke about Mbop and stuff. But it was, like, they, they were, like, 14, 15, 16, writing their own records and, like, playing the instruments. Like, that's amazing. That is. To me, at least. You know, it's not to anybody else. But, yeah, man. It's all good. Definitely. And you're talking about, like, school and how, like, you were. What type of person, like, if you could describe... Were you like the band like type of person? Were you the one that was always <laughs> into music? Were you like an athlete? Like what were you like in high school? Oh, never the athlete. <laughs> <That> just <laughs> I just thought I'd throw those here. out. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but I mean, I was definitely always into the music and arts and stuff. I mean, uh, I don't I don't think I was like in the popular crowd, but everybody knew me. I was mm. like the neutral kid. Like mm. everybody knew me. You know what I mean? And it was like oh, cause I had friends all over. I had jock friends. One of my best friends in high school was a jock. He was on the football team. And I had friends that were in the nerds. And I had friends that were just awkward. I just had all kinds of friends. And I just knew everybody. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I went to the same high four years. So, everybody knew me from ninth grade. So, it's cool, man. I was just, like, a, a neutral guy. I was in chorus. Oh, I was in chorus in fifth grade to twelfth grade. Um, and I didn't, I was just, uh, like, I, I wasn't too crazy and I wasn't too, so, so yeah. Mm, definitely. In Atlanta, uh, there's, it. oh, I'm sorry to cut you off. Um, Atlanta, there's a ton of new music coming out of such a prominent musical city. You hear so much about, it, like you're saying, 2-9, and there's so many other, you know, big artists that are brewing out of there, including yourself. So can you tell us? about your perspective of the current state of the music in that city? Um, I feel like, man, Atlanta has always had it. I feel like they gave us the ball, like, around 92, 93, 94, mm -hmm. and we just never let it go. And um, I feel like we're always going to keep the ball rolling because for some reason it's just something out here. It's something that affects the people that also affects the music that I can't really describe. And mm -hmm. it... it, it it makes us great for some reason, but right now I feel like what's going on is a bunch. It's a bunch of a bunch of kids like me. Sorry, it's a bunch of kids like me that grew up where I, I grew up and how I grew up, listening to everything and being influenced by all the Atlanta greats like Outkast and Ludacris and mm -hmm. the Ti's and the Jeezy's and all that. But we also grew up like in the TRL era, listening to Lincoln Park and all that. So we're influenced by so much that that's what comes out in our music. So it's a lot of Atlanta artists don't, that you probably wouldn't think are from Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? Like the two nines. And then you got Milo Smith, who's just a dope singer, rapper. That's like my little sister. She's on my project. My little sister, she's the truth. And you got Earth Gang, who's out here doing their thing, Money Making Neek, Chirp. Yeah. It's just so much out here. The Gold Dreamer. It's a lot of artists right here. I think like 2014, they're all going to like just blow. And it's going to be like a problem. And people are really going to see that. Atlanta yeah. isn't just like trap and club stuff like it's really good music coming out here like really thought provoking and you know but it's still jamming you know what I'm saying it's still melodic and it's still you know something to, to bump to so yeah man Atlanta we just got the juice and we never gave it up <laughs> that's it <laughs> no that's dope that's so funny because we were at the um we were escorts for the Soul Train Awards and there were a bunch of people from Atlanta yeah. and they were just telling us about the city like everything going on like you guys need to do this you need to do that so being from us from Vegas as a tourist when we do go to Atlanta because that's on our list for 2014 yeah. for sure <laughs> like where are some spots oh, that you recommend us to go like what should we do Okay, well, hopefully, I will say hopefully you guys come on the third Saturday of the month so you can go to Dirty Thirds at MJQ. Okay. That's like, you know, the club that everybody goes to down here. Well, not everybody. I mean, like, I guess in my little scene of, like, the slick hipsters or whatever, like, just the kids out here, like, you know what I'm saying? We go to MJQ. That's where we listen to everything. They play everything over there from, like, from from, from trap step to house to, like, you know, the club stuff, the trap. It's just everything, man. They got everything over there. Um, MJQ is the truth. Um, 
there's just so <laughs> much stuff in the city, man. Um, you can go to the Varsity if you want to. That's like a tourist spot to go get food. But it's always Waffle Houses down here. So you wow. definitely got to go to the Waffle House. You know what I'm saying? You got to... Um, a lot of stuff to do out here. You got to go to Little Five Points just to walk around Little Five Points and see what's going on. You got to go to Fly Cakes on Peter Street, get some shoes. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Uh, well, it's just so much to do in the city. I mean, if you want to, you can go to Six Flags. Like, there's just a lot. There's a lot going on, man. It's just hmm. something to do um, during the day. If you want to do, like, nightlife stuff, like, you got to come on certain nights. But, uh-huh. yeah, man, of course, it's the strip club. <laughs> you know, you got the KOD, the Blue Flames, the... Mall 21, Onyx, <laughs> like, it's, you know, strip club. That's, that's just what they do out here. So. Yeah. Um, we, we definitely go, go go out there soon, and, and when we're old enough, too, we're going to hit everything else up, too. <laughs> right. <laughs> old enough? Well, can Wait, you... my, my bad. Can you repeat that? My bad. The, the signal had cut off. Wait, how how old are you guys? Uh, we both 19 right now. 19. Oh. oh, oh <laughs> you hear his reaction? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah. That's cool though. I'm 23, so yeah. I feel like I'm still 19 though, so, you know. That's oh, all. Man. That's it's, all. That. It's not even that big an age difference, man. <laughs> it really isn't. It really isn't, but like, man, you you'll be surprised cuz like I was talking to this one chick and she's like 18, and I was like, "Do you remember 3LW?" She was like, "Who's that?" I was like, "What?" what? So, man, I think I was that was just crazy. her because 3LW. Come on. <laughs> now I got their CD still. <laughs> yeah, she was like, I don't know who 3 of you is. I was like, bro, what's going on? It's just crazy because, like, the younger that these kids are, it's like they don't remember stuff. Like, they don't understand the importance of stuff. Like, yeah. you know, I know kids are looking at Bustin' Rhymes like, who's Bustin' Rhymes? Like, they don't understand <laughs> who Bustin' Rhymes is. It's true. They don't understand who... Some of them don't even understand who really Pusha T and, like, the clips are. Like, I can't agree with you more. Thing, that is so true. Like, to these... These kids, they just feel like either just some guys are, like, here. You know what I'm saying? It's like, but they don't understand, like, a lot of these people are, like, legends, and they've, like, done stuff for the culture. That's like, you know, like, they will just never understand. Like, somebody's like, they don't understand who Mace is. Or, I remember yeah. one, I, okay, yeah, this is a true story. There was this one kid at this one store. At, it's a Ginza, a store named Ginza. You got to go there, too, in Atlanta. It's called Ginza. Okay. I was over there, and this kid was like, who's Dallas P? I was like, what? Like, he was like, <laughs> yeah. Like, he, he was on BMF on the Rick Ross record. I was like, no, bro. Like, Styles P was a D block. Like, bro, yeah. they've been around. Like, that's like culture, bro. Like, what are you talking about? But wow. he's young. Like, he just doesn't get it. Mm-hmm. Mm. Man, that's. <laughs> That's a crazy story because you do hear that so much. People don't understand the roots of the music that they listen to now and how much influence those artists had on people of today. So it's unfortunate. Exactly. That's so true. Exactly. That's why definitely with our show, we have a segment called Know Your Roots. So we go back and we pull a song like, say, for instance, if it's a track of that samples an old song and then we play it and try to have people figure yeah. it out. So that's so funny you brought that up. We are mm. vibing out. <laughs> you know what you should do? You should do that with behavior and then play uh, Mace. Uh, which record yeah, yeah. Was uh, more money, more problems. Movie. You have to play that. Yep. Yeah. yeah that's that's so many people idea. don't know that. Dude. People don't know that Drake flipped the Mace verse. Like, people yes. don't understand that. I can't, I can't <laughs> stress it enough because, like, that verse is like one of my my favorite. Like, more money, more problems is like my record, bro. So when people play play worst behavior and stuff, like it's all these like band girls, like oh yeah, worst behavior. And I play more money, more problems. I play the original verse and like oh, that's where it's from. Like yeah. they don't even know, man. <laughs> Let them know. <laughs> people don't get it. People don't get it, man. But it's all good. Like you know, I feel like you know, with time, people are gonna understand things like that. I mean. It's going to happen. I mean, before you know it, all the rappers that, like, we love are going to be, like, considered old school. You know yeah. I mean? yeah. Like, that's so true. This is going to happen. And, and it's just, that's just how the times roll. And, and just ran, random real quick side note. So, you know, now we're talking about, like, some Drake nothing of the same, one of the same records. You know uh, you know that Connect Drink, you know the original track to that, the sample they used in that as well? This. Um, I don't know. I it's, might I might have thought yeah. about it, but never brought it up. Man. Have you heard that track Swang by Trey? 
Yes, that's yeah. exactly where they got that from. You're yes, right. I know that. Yeah, yeah I know that. <laughs> yeah, because like I didn't know that until like two days ago. So like it's funny that you bring that up because I literally was in my room like playing swan- like playing the original sample. And I was like, oh, this record is all these Southern artists and stuff. I just wanted to bring that up randomly. <laughs> 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 no, it's funny because I just actually found that out. Funny, I just found that out. Might be two two days ago for me, too, because I was in Miami wow. and my boy was playing. He was playing it. And I was like, oh, Drake just took this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, man. And, um, Drew, it's just it's, it's amazing having a conversation with you about music. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about what you're working on now and, and what else we can look forward to in the future, man, with your new project and, and whatever it is you're working on? Um, right now, I'm, uh, you know, we're uh, still on Vice House Deluxe. Um, the Gucci Main video should be on your TV screens pretty soon, so look out for that. Um, yeah, we're uh, gearing up another video for the record, uh, Ready for the World. It's pretty much going to be like Definitely. the next record we're rolling with but um yeah man besides that like i said i'm just writing for other artists and producing for other artists and then collaborating with everybody else man so 2014 is going to be a very interesting and dope year it's going to be uh something exciting so yeah man it's just plenty of that work yeah nice. for sure man we we yo you need to do a you need to do a video to like mob <laughs> every yeah, everybody wants that. I mean, you know, that's in the works as well. You know, yo, what I'm that that's my record, man. Like, I li- I could play that in the car, <laughs> and when when you know when the clap the clap comes in, I'm like, oh, hey, like you know, that's that's the record, bro. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I appreciate that, bro. A lot of people been telling me that, man. Like for real, for real. So, you know. That's so funny. It's like we really (laughs) found out about you during a meeting. We were having a meeting with one of our connections and what Uh, how could we like what could we what could we say about Antonio? Like what is Oh yeah, yeah. so so like the marketing director for the dunk exchange, man. Yeah, there we go. So so his (laughs) homeboy I don't know what he he said that he knew your manager or something. And then he was like, Yo, yeah, this, this guy Forte Bowie, he's coming out of Atlanta. He's so dope. He raps and sings like I gotta put you on, and he showed us a forest song. So I'm like, okay, let me go get go home, and I download the whole tape, and I'm literally listening to every record. And I'm like, oh man, like, like wait a minute, <laughs> yeah, like you got some man. I really wow. dig your music. We we downloaded the old tape too. We played Impala. Like we really wow. like your music, man. A lot, man. Thank you, man. I really appreciate that. And I'm glad that I can like bring joy to like people's life. You know what I'm saying? Through that, like, sometimes I feel like that's all I'm really good at in life is just making music. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, I'm glad people can really just listen to it and enjoy it and see where I'm coming from. You feel what I'm saying? So I appreciate you guys for real, for real. Thank Definitely. So Most, yeah, and, um, you know, with that being said, yo, when are you going to come to Vegas? <laughs> yo, I'm, okay, I'm going to be in L.A. in January, so... You know, I it's nothing to really get in the whip and make that trip. You feel me? So, you know, maybe in January. I don't know. We we gonna work it out. I gotta you know try to see if I can get a show out there or something. But I'm yeah. definitely coming to Vegas in 2014. It's nothing for sure. Yeah, yeah. Hit us up. You're definitely. Are, you're having a show in LA. Is that what you're saying? No, I'm just gonna be out there. Oh, you're like, just gonna, I'm be, really out gonna there. be out there for like three weeks. Gotcha. I'm gonna be out there for like three weeks just chilling. So, Shoot, we might take a know. trip down there too, man. You never know. Yeah, with the lack of hey. shows here, we go out to LA like it's All the nothing. Time, man, so. <laughs> so if you're out there, oh, we gotta know. No shows in Vegas? Is no shows in Vegas though? I mean, like as far as you know, like we were talking about our age yeah. restrictions. So Yo. you got the casino, oh. you know. The, so and with that being said, too, like you know, when we ask you about culture, like questions like Atlanta and your perspective on the city's music, like Las Vegas, it, it, as many people see it from the outside looking in. Like we've lived here for a while now, and, and there's really a lack of hip hop culture coming out of here. You know, with, with in regards to like artists and 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 fans showing love to local artists and stuff. But yeah. but guarantee, man, you're gonna you're gonna hear a lot of new stuff coming out of our city in in, ne- in the next coming year because we we really as as the radio show we really pushing to to like you know push our artists out and from Vegas and the culture as well. So yeah, yeah, that's dope, man. That's amazing. I applaud y'all for that for Thank real, for you. real putting on for your own city, man. That's Cause I mean, if y'all don't do it, who else is gonna do it? Man? Exactly. And, exactly. And we appreciate that, man. And, and definitely, like, while you out in LA or you come down here, man, we definitely like to link with you, chill with you, or something, chop it up for sure. 
Man, just let me know, man. I'm with it. Like, like do y'all follow me on Twitter? Because I'm going to follow yeah, y'all back. Yeah, man, we are you right now, man. <laughs> good man. folks, good folks. Good but is there anything Thanks else that you me. wanted to add? We didn't have any more questions. Hmm. Anything else, anything else I want to add? Um, I want to tell everybody. Wait, wait, real quick. My bad, man. Uh, can you repeat what you just said? It just cut off a little bit real quick. I don't even think I really said anything. Oh, my oh, my bad. I thought you said something, bro. My bad. I'm sorry. I was like, I was trying to listen and see. But, no, for anybody that's really listening, like, you know, I don't know who's listening, but, yo, life is life. You just got to live it. You know what I'm saying? We young. Figure it out, bro. You just got to kind of just keep faith in something, man, and you'll be, like, straight, you know, like, just remember that, aside from, like, music, you know what I'm saying, because hopefully somebody is, like, listening, and, like, this helps them out, but, like, everything, and that's just for anybody that's, like, going through whatever or anything like that, like, everything's going to be all right, you're going to be straight, life is supposed to be hard sometimes, you just got to figure your way out of it, but besides that, like, you know, ForteBowie.com, F-O-R-T-E-B-O-W-I-E.com. It's the same thing on Twitter. Um, Instagram is the same thing, Forte Bowie, man. And Vice House Deluxe, the project is out right now. Like you said, Drew Hill Forever, and I Can't Make You Love Me. You know, go to the SoundCloud, too, SoundCloud.com slash Everything Bowie. So, yeah, man, that's that's pretty much it, bro. Wow. Thank you so much for taking the time out to do this. You're really good people. You appreciate it. Hey, man. Y'all good y'all people. I appreciate y'all for even liking me. Definitely. <laughs> so, uh, I appreciate it. Definitely. And we are going to definitely push your music on our site and through all our social media to get people in Vegas to know that L- ATL is popping. Yeah. Do that, man. Please do that, man. I appreciate y'all straight up. It's nothing but love, man. Definitely. But we want to get into this track real quick. If you can oh. introduce Gucci Mane for us. Yeah. You want to give us a little uh, taste of that or just introduce that before we play it real quick? We got to let the people know what I your music's you. about. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yo, ladies and gentlemen, I go by the name of Forte Bowie. This record you now is you know performed be produced by me it's a record called gucci main you know what i'm saying this is uh for anybody going through relationship you know what i'm saying problems and you know the whole it's complicated stage you feel what i'm saying <laughs> this record, you know so yeah this is uh forte boy gucci main vice out the left of the project twitter.com slash forte boy forte boy.com yeah there we go we got gucci man let's play it Let's go. I said I'm good, good. I'm Gucci Mane. I said I'm straight, I'm straight. I'm Gucci Mane. You broke my heart, and I'll never be the same. You broke my heart, and I'll never love again. I said I'm good. I'm 